Did he come ask you about the password? Uh, no. I just had a move move over. That's how I see it. Did he come before others? Thank you very much. Is there a way to use the screen? I want to give away. If there's not, you're
Yeah, I mean, I know she's in Korea, but uh, you just know her. No, I know so. So, so my point is this is that I got a language. But we all have to buy it.
This is what we are going to be trying to, to use as a guideline. Say, and I'm going to read all these, to these questions. Let's keep those questions in mind. No? What can we do? And uh, what are, well, how can the communities use technology uh, to, uh, uh, in recovery and, and long term reconstructions? So, with that, uh, we're going to start with uh, Maria, right? And, uh, uh, Maria Dillard, is, she's, uh, you can read that here, okay? You may say, no, it's here, okay? Take a picture. And, uh, <laughs> so, she has been doing a lot of great work here, and uh, you can see all, all that here. But, uh, she's actually been involved in the Puerto Rico's project, so she will bring some, some of the uh, local context, which is part of what the, the conference is in intending to, to do, so I just you know, very happy. Thank you for joining. Um, let me see where you slide here. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I just give you a sign. Two minutes. Okay. okay. So I, I'm going to throw off our whole reordering of the program by talking about more than just social items. I am a social scientist, a sociologist by training, um, but I am representing a very large set of work that, that covers many more areas. And so I want to, to represent all of that very briefly, and then I will probably uh, speak more from my perspective during the, the question and answer. So I am coming from NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. It's a federal agency within the U.S. Department of Commerce. 
and we're happily a fairly under the radar agency that does a lot of science um, work that helps to inform standards, um, codes and practices, but we actually don't have the power to set those. Um, which I think puts us in, in actually a, a nice position. So we, we provide the science that informs them, we help carry out those, um, those recommendations and, and try to see them into to practice. Uh, we have a long history at NIST of studying disasters and this work falls under a couple of different federal statutes. And then more recently, um, in the last five to seven years, um, there's been a community resilience program that got developed at NIST as well that's really trying to take a little bit more of a, a broad perspective, thinking about the, the engineering problem in relation to all the other things that should be considered alongside it. And all of this work is really aimed at helping us to learn from disasters, to improve our standards and practices, and ultimately with this goal of, of making people safer and, and reducing the impacts of the, the events, um, as well as trying to improve, improve resiliency or the ability of communities to respond and recover more quickly after an event. So our history of, of disaster and failure studies while it has been mostly building focused, um, not exclusively. And the, the areas of work really cover all these different hazard types. So you see that there's a, a strong construction and building focus, as well as a focus on earthquake, hurricanes, or other wind events, um, tornadoes, and then fires. So there's been a lot of investigation over time. The, the items that read are technical investigations that have a very specific categorization, and I'll talk a little bit about that as I move forward, and you will see, though it's in very small letters, yeah. that Hurricane Maria falls under our hurricane investigations. So the work that NIST does falls under these three statutory authorities that are within the disaster space, and these are all congressionally mandated spaces that, that we work within. And happily, each of these really does include both social, economic, and then physical system components to them. So we have the National Earthquake Hazards Reduction Program, the National Construction Safety Team Act, which is the, the one that is, is modeled very much after the National Transportation and Safety Board, but thinking of instead of transportation, investigations, it's really building and, and kind of collapse and failure investigations. And then we have the National Windstorm Impact Reduction Program, which is the, the youngest of the three. And again, all of these are really focused on making measurable reduction of loss of life, property, and, and other impacts, and trying to understand how to, to better kind of recover from these events as well as better mitigate them. Our Community Resilience Program, which is where I sit within the Engineering Laboratory, is really focused on these three broad spaces of work. So we do, I, I make the biggest one science because that's really the, the focus of the work, but we also do quite a bit of, of providing guidance and tools to communities and others, as well as stakeholder engagement. So we, while NIST is not well set up to do a huge amount of, of technical assistance and we really kind of utilize some of our other federal and, and state and local partners for doing that work, we have done some of it in developing the guidance and tools because sometimes there's just yeah, a, a real need that, that gets responded to quickly and it's an opportunity for us to also ensure that the guidance is really reaching the right people and that we can make adjustments to the guidance that we provide. So we have a community resilience planning guide process that is represented by this graphic on, on the right side. It's just one of the, the tools that we have available. Actually, I'm going to stay here for a second. The, one of the foundational concepts of this program, and then I'm going to mention this later in the work, is really the idea that that buildings perform um, functions for some societal need, not independent of themselves. So our buildings and our infrastructure 
the, the needs for those and the demands on those are something that gets socially defined and also relates very much to the functions that they provide to society. So a hospital getting repaired is really important, but it's important because healthcare is provided within that space. So repairing the building alone actually doesn't get you back to providing health care. And that's really one of the, the foundational concepts of the work, which is why they hired a social scientist to, to come into the program and support the engineering work that happens alongside it. So as I said, we have those, those three different statutory authorities, and um, NIST is using two of those um, to, to look at Hurricane Maria. And this got um, announced as a, a technical investigation under our National Construction Safety Team Act um, in, I want to say in February following the, the hurricane by the NIST director. And these, um, the first four projects fall under that authority. So as part of this work, we're going to look at and understand and kind of characterize the hazards. We'll look at performance of critical buildings, and those are defined as hospitals and schools because the work has to apply to the U.S. codes and standards broadly. So we look at specifically engineered structures in this case and really do a, a kind of very deep look at their failures and then dependence on infrastructure and related systems. We have a public response to emergency communications project that focuses on the communication systems and the messaging directly, both during and after the hurricane. And then we have a morbidity and mortality project that is not seeking to do another count, but is actually looking to attribute some of the, the deaths to building and infrastructure failures, very specifically. So it's in, in greatly in coordination with the other work that has been done and is seeking to really try to attribute um, very specifically to, to where buildings and, and infrastructure failures have led to the loss of life. And then under our National Windstorm Impact Reduction Program, we have these three projects that are focused on recovery. So this is recovery of infrastructure systems supporting those buildings, recovery of medium and small businesses, as well as the supply chain in Puerto Rico, and then recovery of social functions, um, the recovery of the services provided in schools and hospitals. And that's the project that I lead. So a starting point to, to solutions. I, I saw the, the description of our session and I thought, whoa, solutions, we're supposed to provide solutions. That's a big, it's a big aim and, um, and I'm calling this a starting point. By no means is this the list. But these are the things that I think we're contributing to in our work, but I also think are items that I would encourage this community to be contributing to. So, one of the things that we really are focused on is, is making specific improvements to building codes, but also standards and practices that are beyond building. So ways that emergency communications messages are, are delivered, formats for those messages and the process, um, other decisions that could be made more quickly during recovery so that things can, can get back on track faster. 